So magnitude is just the length, so pretty easy um, just using Pythagoras' theorem in two dimensions to find the length of a two-dimensional vector. So this vector A is 6 minus 5, remember the top number is telling us how far to go left or right, the bottom number is how far to go up or down. So positive 6 means 6 to the right, minus 5 means 5 down. So the length using Pythagoras' theorem is A squared is 6 squared plus 5 squared. Notice we don't have to worry about the negative here. We really don't have to worry about the negative sign. So just 6 squared plus 5 squared. So root 61 or 7.81 units long to 3 sig figs. The same idea works in three dimensions, although it's really difficult to draw these. So the vector 2 minus 3, 6, the length is just square each of the components of the vector. Notice minus 3 squared and 3 squared is the same, so we don't have to worry about that minus really and then take the square root. So the length of B is 7. If you thought that was pretty easy, it is. So here's something a little bit trickier. We've got two points C and D. I've given you the position vectors in terms of I and J. The vector E has got magnitude 5 and is such that E is equal to P times C where P is a scalar. Right. And F has magnitude 9 and is such that f is equal to t times d where t is a scalar. Alright, let, let me break this down for you. If the vector e is p times c, so like 2 times c, that means e is parallel to c. It's going in the same direction. It's like twice as long, three times as long, a half as long. So p is just a number here. So let's find the value of p to start with. What's the length of c? So let's look at the length of this vector c. And we did that before, so the square root of 6 squared plus 8 squared, so c is 10 long. Okay, so I know the length of c is 10, the length of e is only 5. So that means this has got to be a half. e has got to be a half of c, because the length of e is half of the length of c. So p is equal to a half. Let's look at the length of d. d has length... 3 is the working, 2 squared plus 2 squared plus 1 squared, square root of 9 which is 3. Now since the length of f is a constant times the length of d, we get the length of f is 9, length of d is 3, so that means t must be 3. Okay, so we found p and t. Second part, find the magnitude of f minus e. Alright, so really careful here. The length of f minus e is not the length of f minus the length of e. Okay, you might want to convince yourself of that. You can't just subtract the two lengths. What we have to do is work out the vector from f minus e, work out what this vector is, and then find the length. So, f is 3 times d, which is this vector here. e is a half of c, which is this vector here. So f minus e, we just subtract them, gives us this vector here. Now you could write this in column form if you like. I'm just sticking with the original way the question was asked. But if you like, you could write this as 3, 10, minus 3, just going down in a column. So the length of that vector, square each of the components and take the square root, 10.9 to 3 sig figs, or 118, square root of 118, exactly. A common problem we see in the exam is about finding the unit vector in the direction of a given vector. So what we'll see in the next example is we're asked to find uh, the unit vector in the direction of A to B, let's say. So you've got to find what the vector from A to B is first and then make it into a unit vector. And this is the way that you do it. So this little formula here is important. If we've got a vector A, then the unit vector in that direction of A is this. So we take each component and divide it by the length of A. If you do that, you end up with a vector that has a length of 1. So here's the vector A, 2, 2, minus 1, if you want to write it out as a, in component form. The length of this vector is 3. So the unit vector in the direction of this vector here, which has a length of 3, is just a third of this vector here. Okay, so 1 over the length 
times by each of these components. So if we expand that out, that's 2 thirds i, 2 thirds j, minus a third k, or you could write it out like this. This vector is in the same direction of a, but it's only got a length of 1. Last example in this video. This is similar to the last example in the last video. It's a tricky one. Uh, the only difference in this one is where I'm going to ask you to find the unit vector in the direction of, in this case, O to R. So, we've got two points, P and Q. Now, we're giving you the position vectors, remember? So, the coordinates of the point P are 2, minus 1, 4. Coordinates of Q is 10, 1, 12. Once again, really tricky to write out, but you can see my diagram here is just helpful. The point R lies on the line P to Q such that P to R is a half of P to Q. That means R is the midpoint of PQ. So if you didn't have this diagram, I'd just put two points, P and Q, in and draw it out. Look at this really closely and put approximately where R is going to be. In this case, R is right in the middle. And I always draw in O, the origin here. Okay, once again, this diagram is not to scale. It's just a help. It's just helpful to kind of get a feel for what we're doing. We want to know what's the unit vector in the direction of O to R. So what I'm going to do is find the vector from O to R and then use that technique I just showed you to make it into a vector with only length 1. Okay, so first I'm going to find the vector from P to Q. So P to Q is just Q minus P, where Q and P are the position vectors of the point Q and the point P. So P to Q is 8, 2, 8. So P to R is halfway from P to Q. So P to R is a half of P to Q, which is 4, 1, 4. So that's the vector from P to R. So now if I want to get from O to R, I think the simplest way is to go from O to P plus P to R. So there we go, O to P plus P to R. So there's O to P, we're given that one. We've just worked out P to R, so 6, 0, 8 is this vector from O to R. Right, we want the unit vector in that direction. So, the length of O to R, 6 squared plus 0 squared plus 8 squared, root 100 is 10. So the unit vector in that direction is 1 tenth of 6, 0, 8, which is 0 0.6, 0, and 0 0.8. Or if you want to write it out in terms of i, j, and k, it'll be 0.6i plus 0.8k. Okay. 